Hi guys, this is Second Perspective. <laughs> My name is Paul Weston. I'm Ash Mitchell Allen. Hi, and today everybody. we'll be doing a QQ on Creed. It's going to be a discussion. Short form of what a discussion is. We talk about the film, we unpack it, we go, you know, why does this work? Why doesn't this work? Why is Paul right? Why is Mitch wrong? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Honestly, it's usually the other way around. Um... <laughs> But, uh, yeah. Try to, try to save your ass there, Paul. I get it. No, it's, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it's usually true. But uh, I am a very good learner. So, again, we're going to be doing Creed. If you're not sure uh, what Creed is, then stop the video. Go watch it. Um, but other than that, let's just get straight to the question uh, for the discussion that we have. And it's basically why we think this film is a great but, n a great but not transcendent film. And why don't you quickly break down what you what we mean by uh, a transcendent film? Um, yeah, I mean, when you're watching uh, a boxing movie, you can't help. I think at this point, like uh, as far as I know, the boxing, the boxing movie, the boxing picture, as it probably was referred to a long time ago, is probably picture. one of the earliest boxing picture. I always feel like uh, Scorsese when I say picture. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> I try to say it more often just so I can do that. Um, but it's one of the, I think, earliest four like genres of films. I don't know why that is, but perhaps this was the fascination of boxing through the years and whatever it may be. But I think people know what a boxing movie is at this point. Mm -hmm. And even if you haven't seen Rocky, you get the the concept that it's got that it's going for. And I think Rocky was one of the pioneering ones around like the seventies, but there have been so many over the years that you get the formula of what the film sets out to do. Mm -hmm. And so with a film like Creed, it has the opportunity because it's an original character. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a different perspective on the, the uh, Rocky myth. It's not Rocky's perspective. It's uh, Creed's son. And it has this, I think, opportunity to sort of spread past the trappings of the earlier films. And I think what made you know, Rocky two, three, four, five, and six, mm. like not as great. Um, I think Creed comes close to it. Like it does some really interesting things with the character and it really grounds you in a new perspective. But at the same time, especially towards the end, you just know where it's going mm. and it doesn't surprise you or pay off in a way that makes it, um, that uh, goes beyond what you're expecting from these films. Um, and I guess that's just the biggest mode of disappointment is because of uh, even something like the opening scene, which is set in like a juvenile prison mm -hmm. and I think is very clearly related to um, not only like Creed's childhood as a character, but I think the childhood of a lot of uh, African-American youth, especially in troubled homes like, you know, that Adonis doesn't know his father and um, – he has like more of a rough childhood than most. I think it's an interesting way to introduce us to these new characters by being upfront and uh, you know challenging the notion of like what a heroic character is in a lot of these films. So I think uh, I think it is starting from an interesting place immediately, and um, I uh, I wonder if it could have gone further or if it does just enough well, to sort of set up. Where yeah. did you want it to go? It's hard, it's hard to say where I wanted it to go. Like, that's the problem is you sort of end up, like, no matter what ending you have to a film like this, maybe it's possible that it always ends up being sort of something that you're expecting. Mm -hmm. Like, essentially, what Rocky did was the most interesting thing is, um, and you haven't seen Rocky, but mm -hmm. essentially the ending of Rocky is almost exactly the same as the ending of this film. Mm hmm so Rocky, Which I was told, by the way. Right. So Rocky um, wants to be a boxer and he's an underdog the entire film and nobody thinks he's going to do it. He's like too sort of out of shape and not like professional and so forth and so on. And then he makes it long enough in the fight to prove that he's a contender mm -hmm. and he still doesn't win the fight, but he essentially wins over the crowd. Mm -hmm. um, and so then he loses, right? He or does. Yes. Loses. He loses in the first movie, but like the crowd's cheering like Rocky, Rocky, and then mm. every, he yells out, um, which I referenced in the review. He yells out, <laughs> and then Adrian comes over, and they like you know sort of cement like their love for each other and mm. that sort of thing. Um, and that's the ending of the first Rocky movie, and I think it was probably one of the first boxing films in which 
the ending wasn't just like he won the fight mm -hmm. and that's like the the happy ending for the film it's like an ending that meant you could still root for someone even if they're not a total winner mm -hmm. which i think was like part of the whole underdog story that he created so mm -hmm. after that you essentially give the boxing movie three options to end it right mm -hmm. you have it they win the fight mm -hmm. um they lose the fight and mm -hmm. it's like sad and maybe it's a depressing film. You mm -hmm. never know. There could be some out there. I'm sure there are. Yeah. Uh, or, well, I could think of one right now. Uh, which, which one actually? I can't think of one. Uh, spoilers. Spoilers. Spoiler alert. So if you don't want to do it, a uh, million yeah. dollar baby. Yes. Uh, I was going to say that is like you lose the fight and horrifying things happen. Yeah. Or, that's, just, that's exactly. We'll, we'll leave yeah, it with that. Yeah. Okay. So by the way, um, I'm just we could maybe put up like a title card saying like spoiler done if people are. Yeah. yeah. Um, but essentially the third option is this, that Rocky in, sort of invented or pioneered is that you lose, but you win in a way like you win and the emotional battle in a sense. Um, and so by the end of this movie, I guess you really have those three to choose from. Mm. And, and the, at the end of the day, it's hard to say that I know the proper response as to how to transcend uh, a boxing movie, but it has something to do with finding a way to end it mm -hmm. in a more unique pattern and a more unique statement about. Uh, what's just what's really happened. interesting for me is that, like in, in these boxing films, like it's with things like creating stuff. I and I for a brief moment I I thought it might, uh, just because of how often it was focusing on being like you don't have to be your father, you don't have to do boxing all sort of stuff. I mm -hmm. thought for a very brief moment that it was actually not going to end with a boxing fight. That he was just going to walk away from the fight, or something like that, um, and I feel so like that actually might have been interesting, right? And they, it almost, yeah, right, because they kept and like, but on the same token, then you can't make Creed two, and you can't make big jillions right, of dollars, right. right? So like, I understand on a fiscal level, but like on a sort of one-off narrative level, I thought like that's it's just really interesting how like you're very you're a very intelligent guy, but like you're already so focused on like it has to end in a boxing fight, and I'm like, well. Does it have to? Well, ninety no, percent of the time, probably. Yeah. But I feel point. like if you if you work it through the entire story, it doesn't necessarily have to end with a boxing fight. I mean, it's way more risky that way. But that's what I mean. More like sure, yeah. you get those films that go for broke, and either they go like, "Why the hell did you not end a boxing fight? That was fucking stupid." Or you go, "That is revolutionary. That's transcendent. What have you?" Right? And so it's just. I don't think it creates a bad film for ending the way it did. No, but not, not at all. Like, that's... Those are, like, the AA Plus films where it's, like... Um, God damn, I want to talk about certain films. But like, there's a certain film this year that has an ending where you're, like, you did all that just to redo everything. And it's just, like... Right. I, it's, I mean, I think I know which one you're talking about. You know but which I'm one I'm talking about, right? Okay. And it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's so simple, yeah, it's brilliant, mm -hmm. right? And it's just... That's how you get those films that are AA pluses is that they do those things that you're like, if a lesser person tried to do this, it wouldn't have worked, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know. I feel like yeah, and I feel like that's the other thing is that I think Kugler is still a developing filmmaker. Hmm. Like I think in a good way, he's hmm. like doing really good work, and hmm. eventually perhaps we'll see something that's like immensely excellent from him. Hmm. But I still think that he might still be figuring out ways to like push back against you know mm -hmm. formula routine but he's not fully figuring out how to like mm -hmm. leap over it mm -hmm. and it he actually I, as you said that i mean the film also opens with creed in i want to say it's a financial uh in, or an investment office mm -hmm. or yeah. something like that it's something, something with a suit and tie it's something with numbers and money <laughs> yeah. Yeah. um and so, I mean, I guess, is it possible that because it's mainstream that, or a Hollywood film, that, that to, not, to have an ending like you're suggesting, like something that's not as satisfying in terms of boxing, but uh, perhaps more satisfying in a character-driven way, mm -hmm. is that something that probably couldn't have happened in that context? Or is it just we don't know, or that he didn't think of it? Or what, do you, what do you mean? So what I'm saying is, could you have written that ending that you're saying for a Rocky movie? Like, if this weren't Rocky, if this were a boxing movie about a kid who finds what? an old boxing legend, 
Well, I mean, yeah, that's that's like that would be the thing. It's like you go, right. okay, it's Creed, and it's just separate enough. It's a different director, it's a different actor. Like you have you have that opening of like being different, right? Mm-hmm. But you would also end the series, right? Like because that's feel also like, true, yeah. Right, like yeah. you would you would find something being like, um, you know, Rocky. Ultimately, what he does as his last hurrah is like find someone who finds his own passion mm-hmm. or comes to terms with. Uh, these expectations that he puts on himself through the sort of idea of his father and stuff like yeah. that, right? And, like, they they wrote it so that he, he likes boxing. He likes to do and all sorts of stuff, right? So, like, you would have to do, like, a pretty sizable mm-hmm. rework in the beginning because he, they keep saying, like, he wants to do boxing to prove right. that it's and his then, own and then legacy. He can't, and that he shouldn't be because his father mm-hmm. was knocked out. And yeah, which so. honestly, they, that was one of the parts where I was a little bit like, uh, like you know, your father got killed. Yeah, well, you know what? People got killed in baseball too. It's just right. like, yeah, no, exactly. It's like why I, is everyone so hung up on that? And especially I, he is good, which I think yeah. pre proves early on is he is good. Yeah, and yeah, and that's so that for me was sort of like. This is if you're trying to get me to be convinced that this character shouldn't do it, then fine, right? Even if you go like, okay, you know, say he's you know really good at boxing, but he also be a really good pianist or something, or like something crazy like that, then right. you'd be like, look, you're not, you won't be able to be a pianist if you like, you just you'll suck at the piano if you break your hands or something. Then okay, fine. It goes like you're already so good at this, you love this. Why right. do you have to do boxing? Because. I have to prove myself. Whatever. Then that would have been more believable than me, for me than you can't mm-hmm. do it because your father died and I'm not going to train you because your father died. And I'm like, you're in a room for other boxers. That's just, yeah. just not... Yeah, like like all of these other people could die. Why yeah. are you beholden? Right, this <laughs> guy's already there. shown. He's, he's more likely to kill someone else and he's going to yeah. die, right? Yeah. So that yeah. for me was sort of a hard thing to buy. I see, I see what you're saying. That's a good point. But I just... Yeah, and like... I mean, again... Like we've we've made some short films ourselves. We are well aware that it's much easier to talk the talk than walk the walk. I, no, right? absolutely, yeah. So we're not saying this is a, a bad film by any means. We just think like you know, um, if people are curious of what would make you know a, for us a B my a B plus a minus film into one of the greats, it would be taking a risk like that. And if like you know. <laughs> I don't even know if I would have the balls to make a risk like that when I'm getting given that much money, being trusted by someone like Sylvester Stallone, and not only that, but like there are there's producers, there's people that are giving the money that be like, yeah, there's a lot of no, stake in- you're not allowed to do that, right? And like that's often why you see in these indie films why they are more adventurous with narratives because there's less people or less money being put there's, into it, there, right? There's usually, some, or sometimes at least, mm-hmm. less at stake, right? Yeah. Like, like Creed is expected to make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And if it does Because I think it's made for a, a semi-decent amount of money considering the Hollywood mm-hmm. scope and it's had that rocky, you know, sort of expectation behind it. Mm-hmm. So you have to... I mean, I wonder if, if you're just sort of locked into that. I yeah. guess you probably are. Honestly, it's, that's... it's too bad because because I think the movie is so great when it's character driven, and the thing with the last fight is it's not like for me it's the least connected to the characters. It's more like the idea of a guy fighting and then he's gonna win or he's gonna lose. Like yeah. it becomes so basic at that point right. that I lose the fact that Creed is a character, not just like a fighter. Yeah. yeah, I. Why don't we go and talk about sort of like the fights and all this stuff in just a moment? Sure. The one thing that I want to sort of wrap up on all these things is that this whole thing we talked about, like how like it's not just the scripts that you have or like a, a director's desire to do something. Like there are outside forces. That's why films like Mad Max and other stuff like that that are just they are high budget and so fucking good and somehow find a way to be unique in that way, that's why I admire them so much, right? And things like The Dark Knight, where it's just like somehow, even though it's expected to make a ton of money, there's all sorts of external pressures, there's original, uh, like it's taking from, you know, a different content or a different content or from a different person, like in from mm. Batman and stuff like that, somehow they still make a movie, that's when you know someone's great at their craft, right? Where somehow you've been through all these people trying a way to get through it. Anyways, 
going to the fight scene, uh, one of the first things that I talked to um, Nathan, the person I saw the film with, about um, was the idea... I really liked that fight scene where it was like one shot and after some point you realize like hey it's it's not cutting um yeah he also it, it uh, yeah it doesn't like it doesn't ever uh tell you hmm. that, like or sort of hmm. uh project that that is how the scene is going to unfold you just yeah. sort of realize. figure it out at some point and you're like yeah. i'm completely okay with this yeah and it's, it's a really good like that it's surprising yeah and it's like that's it's a really refreshing way of mm. using the one shot because it's necessary but also enhances the the experience in the fact that like boxing rounds are like two minutes a piece or three mm. minutes i'm forgive me for being it kind of getting it wrong um but it also kind of that's something that you don't often get from films is that like the whole full three minutes right they usually cut or they do you know Oh wow! You yeah, know, Boxer Ray is getting quite a few punches. Oh, but he's starting to fight back. Oh, ding ding! Mm -hmm. Oh, right, and it's like that's one round, uh, which actually happens in a later uh, round or a right. later fight, right. which is what we're going to talk about. And it's like for both of us, that one shot was the most visceral, probably the best, at least um, action-based uh, scene for us. Yeah, I, and, I think that, that's fair because yeah. I don't. I, for me, is might be my favorite scene in the whole thing, but I. Mm -hmm. Could also say that there are a few scenes otherwise that I really thought were excellent too. Well, let's let's yeah. just get right to it. like, do we think that was the ideal placement of the fight scene? Um, it, it is. It. I mean, it's it's interesting. Um, and this was something. Oh, I, sorry. Uh, the one shot, not necessarily the. Yeah, sorry. The uh, the fact that it's a one shot, mm. and because I mean, it makes sense the actual scene in context of this the narrative, but. Mm. Um, I mean, first of all, the the scene works as a one take. I think so well because it's so Im immediate. Hmm. Like, there's I think there's so many ways that like sports scenes, fighting scenes, can bend and stretch time in a way that like audiences are probably like subconsciously not getting, but then, or, or sorry, are consciously not like understanding, but subconsciously you sort of know that they're playing with you mm -hmm. when you cut from you know one fighter like punching and you sort of slow it down a bit or you like cut outside to the audience like you know that they're manipulating something mm -hmm. and what's interesting about the shot is that it's obviously very structured and like very choreographed but it feels like it's just almost documentary it's almost immediate mm -hmm. and they're not playing around with that sense of time and it sort of lands you in that fight so much i think better mm -hmm. than so many other fight scenes that i've seen where it mm -hmm. just feels like they're playing around with you. Well, it just a gives it a, a, yeah. another layer of authenticity, right? Yeah. They're not doing some cheap angle cut where, like, you know, the fist is, like, five, six, seven inches from the guy's face. Right, right, right. right, like right. It's, and, and maybe it's just from the filmmaker in me, but knowing that they had to choreograph and all that, like, it just, mm -hmm. the, the fact that they put, I know they had to put more love into the scene, makes me just like it that much more... Well, it's also, right. I mean, what's interesting about it is it's like almost structured like a little short film of its own. Because mm -hmm. I think the advice that Rocky gives him, like you'll see if it pays off in one part of the fight and you're always watching for that. And then you'll go back to the edge of the ring and maybe he'll have mm -hmm. failed or maybe he'll have actually done something right. Mm -hmm. And so there's a little narrative in that like, little scene that I think works really nicely and it's constructed really well. So the problem, I think, is that that scene is so, I think, beautifully constructed in mm -hmm. so many ways. Mm -hmm. That when you get to the final scene, which is your climax, I mean, it's what the film works towards. Should. <laughs> or no, should. No, yeah, sorry, sorry. It's, it's <laughs> what it is, I think, in this case, but also should. Mm. The problem is that you're sort of, you've played your most, I think your most... Mm, your trump card, your ace. Your, yeah, your, you played your trump card. Is, I was trying to think of that, and I couldn't play some... Uh, well, then you just started Donald Trump, and then you started, like, twitching out. Uh, yeah, and then you're like... <laughs> uh, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> aneurysms um so i it's just it's hard to see a filmmaker use that so early in the mm. process of that film mm. and then eventually like you would hope that he has one more thing mm. that he's going to throw at you that mm. towards the final fight you'll go oh like this is a technique either filmically or narratively that like we haven't seen before in this film and it's just it's surprising impactful. and it will resolve something and then by the end of it you just know that it's a regular fight scene mm. and it will end in one way or another but mm. it doesn't there's nothing inventive I find mm. about the last scene at all 
and, and it's no su- in such stark contrast mm-hmm. to the to that scene because mm-hmm. it's uh, will, will you? I also haven't seen this movie in a couple of weeks, but I just don't remember anything particularly distinctive about the last scene. Well, the yeah. there's there's two things. Okay, um, ooh, I'm a little bit du- there. We go. Okay. Um, look at that! I can control my own light. Ooh, uh, the uh-huh. The the final fight, the big thing that I remember is when he gets knocked out, mm-hmm. and he kind of d- tilts over. Wasn't it a flashback? Yeah, a they had a flashbacks? flashback, right, right. and he gets up, and they say that he gets up like a man possessed. That actually, for me, it it worked emotionally. It right? works, but it's also, it's just like information that we know already, and I'm mm. just, I'm not sure that it like, like I find... If you're gonna use that, like I don't know if it maybe reveals a different context to those shots. Then yeah, sure. and that's it's what I mean. It's of, just like we're sort of seeing it again, right? Yeah, and it's just seen again. And I thought it'd be like it's a good build up to the moment, mm-hmm. right? But that was sort of the moment when I wish it was sort of just the step before it, right. and so. Like it does the whole I guess the Rocky thing where he doesn't quite win. He almost knocks him out. And, like, it's it's all well choreographed, and it's all, you know, sort of emotionally involving. But it doesn't, again, it doesn't do anything with that last little twist on something that we've seen, like, a mm-hmm. jillion times before. And the final scene, I guess, like, when he was walking up the stairs. Oh, I, uh, with Rocky right, walking up the steps and stuff, yeah. yeah. Right, like, I guess that has more impact for other people who have seen Rocky. But for me... Like, without being told, like, I could guess, often throughout this film, I could guess when, like, oh, I guess they're, they're being nostalgic, or they're, they're doing an homage, or whatever, to a particular scene, like, with the chickens, like, I'm like, I, there's gotta be some sort of, like, oh, Rocky did this in the first movie, or whatever, um, am I right? Yeah, yeah, like, it's not, it's not over the top with that, but it has Mm -hmm. a few moments sprinkled throughout, yeah, well, I just, I was guessing with the chickens, but, um, I... Because he says something like the chickens have gotten slower. Yeah, I can't remember if there's chickens. There is a very famous like part mm. of the montage, and I think the first one where he's like drinking eggs, just like raw eggs. Mm. So maybe that's what he's talking about. I don't, okay. or maybe it's I can't remember. I haven't seen the movies in a while, but interesting. Well, anyways, the the final moments, like mm. the final images and stuff, it 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 does very little for me. Um, it's sort of good because I'm quite attached to Rocky by this moment, him getting up the stairs by himself and being like, yeah, I'm going to fight this, I'm going to fight the cancer. That's kind of like, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Right. But nothing like, I swear, like the, huh, I'm gonna, like when we, when you and I watched, uh, Marcy May, Martha, Marcy, Martha, Marcy May Marley. <laughs> that, um, that one, like the final image. Yeah. It packs just, a punch. It was just like. So, oh, it was so good. It was so awesome because not only was it sort of uh, visually interesting, but it, it it took all the entire film and just slammed it right to the end, right? And that's so awesome. With this one, it was just them. It's uplifting in an obvious way. Yeah. You know I mean? Like, like it's like, oh, I should be happy about this, and I am happy about it. But I'm like, but I'm not ecstatic. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right? So, yeah. yeah, I don't know. That's that was sort um, of my. I also, also, I mean, you've never seen like the Philadelphia step sequence, but like, mm-hmm. I will say that actually, it maybe as a newcomer, you're not quite as attached to it, but mm-hmm. also as someone who's seen that, mm-hmm. I it's actually the opposite effect to me. Like it's like I've seen it so many times that I'm just numb to it. I'm like, all right, Philadelphia steps, he's climbing up. That's like the metaphor for. <laughs> Uh, overcoming your adversity and yeah exactly right like I've already seen this <laughs> yeah. I get it and so it as a newcomer it might be a little bit confusing or, or uh, disconnecting mm. as a someone who knows what's happening it's mm. also I think a little bit just like eh it's mm. pat yeah. um, is there a, yeah, yeah I was just gonna say is there anything that you wanna bend about before we kinda yeah wrap it I think um, I think one of the interesting things that the mm. film does yeah. Besides, uh, besides, I think the love story is like mm. nicely handled in it. It's more of like a, a push and pull relationship rather than like 
you know, like a, like the female character is sort of like device because it's sort of the way that a lot of these like fighting films work is it's almost like another goal for the fighter and it's not really great, but she's like a really fleshed out person, which is awesome. So that's like another way. The hearing like, aid thing was, uh, yeah. and the hearing loss was actually quite uh, a nice touch. Yeah, it's a nice touch and it feels like like both I gave the feels genuinely. for me personally. Yeah, it's it, like well, it also feels like they're genuinely both overcoming adversity and mm. both doing something about it, which is mm. not often what you see with all of the characters in a lot of these movies. It's usually just one character has a bunch of obstacles, and everyone else is like, "You shouldn't be doing this." And okay. or, so it's or nice. You can do it. Can exactly. Exactly. Fix and they switch it around, off right? the builder. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but it's, continue. it's nice to see that. And then the other interesting thing that it does is it gives uh, our lead. Like our lead character of the series, mm. I guess sort of a supporting character in the film, but Rocky mm. uh, gives him uh, cancer. So the cancer actually that it gives him, I was surprised because I hadn't seen this form of cancer. It's a uh, sorry, it gives um, him. So it's it's non non lymphoma mm -hmm. uh, or sorry non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Mm -hmm. um, it's a form of cancer that my father actually mm -hmm. has, but he's mm -hmm. he's um, doing quite well with. It's like very treatable, but it's. Uh, it's a form of cancer that you don't often see in films. It's like very specific and it's very prevalent in a lot of people, but it you usually see lung, you see like pancreatic or Why do you think a lot that of is? the more common, like I think recognizable ones, breast, mm -hmm. breast cancer, et cetera. So as a choice to use something like non-Hodgkin's lymphoma or uh, I think something like that, it's a, it feels more like a real choice like the right. like the sickness is i think also uh knowing a bit more about it it's more treatable than other cancers but it can also if not treated very fast can accelerate uh at a level that's not great um and so the decision that rocky makes in that first scene when he finds out mm -hmm. to just quietly dismiss it yeah. i think is one of the most interesting choices the film makes yeah to just have him say there uh, you know he's making his peace with the world and he's visiting adrian all the time and then there's this Thing that the world presents him with as an option to well I'm just going to go towards Adrian and the film sort of says okay maybe he'll just let go and hmm. move on and then well and they, uh, so did, yeah. that's oh sorry just to briefly get in there like, and that's also like a really interesting choice because he's known to everybody who's seen all this stuff as a fighter right mm -hmm. and so for the guy that's supposed to be the fighter to just be like right that's, that's, that's uh, it kind of adds to things, right? So then that's when I, I read something um, the other day. It was like an op-ed on this very part. And mm. so the way that the movie unfolds, for those of I mean, if you've seen it, you know that he eventually does go into treatment. He does fight the cancer. He does um, I make it out on the other side ostensibly, right? But one of the interesting op-eds that I've seen about this is that it presents the idea in a very, like, obvious sort of, like, black and white way where if you're fighting it then you're fighting it till the end and that's you know the courage that you have to to seek and to fight mm -hmm. that but a lot of people you know especially i think when you're older and mm -hmm. um you know there's less companionship there's uh maybe less in the physical like like uh present world for you that mm -hmm. some people choose not to uh not to fight the cancer head on, not to treat it and to sort of live life in a, you know, sustainable, like more present, uh, induced way. Um, and I mean, a lot of treatments like that can be quite, uh, rigorous and quite strenuous on you and your personal life and your, um, your mental state. So a lot of people choose not to do that. And so it's an interesting question that the film poses that to fight it, you have to actually fight cancer rather than, mm. you know, presenting it possibly as a as a source of dignity to just sort of stand mm. back and see. I and, don't. I totally disagree and have, with that. And, and sort of yeah. Like it's really interesting. Like I can see why someone and, might and, say and, that. And I'm also not saying that I completely mm. agree with the viewpoint that mm. this op-ed provides, mm. but I thought it was an interesting counterpoint to what we've seen. Well, yeah. I guess my whole point was that like I I I do think that he brings up a it brings up that possibility for Rocky, right? And it's and it's the fact that, like, he goes, like, look, I already saw my wife try to fight something like this. It didn't work. I'm just going to... I just want to go uh, quietly and with dignity. I want to just go quietly, 
right? right. He says he says something very similar to that line, and it's not mm-hmm. that he goes like, "Oh, I'm gonna fight the cancer to like you know fight the cancer." He goes like, "I will fight the cancer for you, Michael B. Jordan." Right, and it's right, like, right. it's 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 to to fight for being around the people with him. Not it's not. So I don't know that I necessarily agree with that that opinion that the film doesn't offer that option of like, look, yeah, you know, what? if if Rocky decided like, look, kid, you're important to me, but it's time for me to go to my wife. Like I've I've been around. I've beat the living crap out of people. Like I'm I'm done. I it gave me. A, that's why that scene was so so powerful for me when he was like the, look like the, the locker the scene doctor. where he's like look i'm not i'm not getting treatment right that's why it was so powerful for me because it made perfect sense as to why rocky wouldn't want to right it, so it makes absolute sense yeah so i don't i think that uh article though i i think it brings up a good point i don't think the film neglects that offer or viewpoint so i don't know no no i also don't think it does mm. so then so the decision, so it, it's just more interesting. So the decision that it makes to have Rocky eventually fight back, like I think it's right for the narrative. Yeah. Is it the bravest choice for the film? Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just the one that fits the best. Yeah. But it's an interesting, it's an interesting concept to think of a film well, in which Rocky does pass and then Creed has to essentially go it alone towards the end. Like, it's an interesting concept, even if it may not be the strongest. I'm, I'm going to just talk about, uh, the one brief thing I will say is that, like, for me, often, like, the bravest choice is usually what I think is to be narratively probably the best choice or potential to be the best choice. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we don't do it. Just just like we were talking about earlier in the discussion, how, uh, you know, maybe it could have been the best choice or the most unique or trans um, film to make this have to be transcendent, would to mm-hmm. be have him not fight, I think that's a brave choice because right. it could be right. I don't think necessarily um, a choice is brave because it's different. If it's different but it's not best narratively or it doesn't bring up new options, I don't think it's brave. I just think you're being different to be... It's just, okay, it's just unnecessarily different. risky perhaps. What you're yeah, right, and it's it's okay. not only that, but it's not even... I, I, I buy that, yeah. Right? It's not even narratively proper, right? You're just you're making your story convoluted or something, right? So, anyways, um, anyway, it was just it was an interesting, yeah, like, yeah, it was just it's an really interesting, interesting thought, thought that I saw, yeah. and I was like, okay. And I usually don't have a coherent, cohesive convers- <laughs> er, argument to someone's point, so I'm very happy for that. Um, do you have any uh, parting points before we say goodbye to the internet? Um, I mean, you know, good for this movie. I yeah. think <laughs> just it just considering it could have been a giant pile of garbage. Uh, yeah, that's very true. It's uh, it's very enjoyable to watch. It's a little on the long side too. I will say, but it's a little on the long side, but not like terrible. But uh, you know, it's definitely a lot better than Beast of No Nation for you. <sighs> no comment. <laughs> I'll say this. I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this objectively. Mm. I enjoyed watching this a lot more. <laughs> fair? Fair? Is that fair? <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, if you're curious why we're uh, giggling a little bit, just go watch the Beast of No Nation review, and it's a, it's definitely interesting. It's it's the one that we he we are actually the most um, divided Detailed. on. Yeah, sure. that's you. Um, other than that, uh, thanks for watching our discussion. Um, let us know if you think that we're totally crazy and that the film is perfect and that we're just bonkers. Uh, let us know. I'm always up to being proven wrong, as is recorded many, many times. Uh, other than that, this is Second Perspective. My name is Paul Weston. Over there is Mitchell Allen. And uh, goodbye, Internet. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>